Okay, hello everyone. So today I thought I would uh, share a little bit about ideas on how to practice over a 251 Barry style. Okay, um, so as many of you know already, Barry does talk about doing a scale outline when you play a 251, for example, D minor 7 to G7 to C major, you are going to use the G7 scale or the G mixolydian, although Barry refers to it as a G7, um, for both the D minor 7 and the G7. The logic behind that being that the D minor 7 is the chord that's found on the fifth, one, two, three, four, five, of the G7. And uh, the, it is the G7's important minor. Uh, those of us that went to other music schools that shall not be named, maybe heard the term the relative to, it means exactly the same thing. But the idea being that since D minor is the same as G7, how are you going to play D minor into G7 when D minor is G7? So just play G7 for the whole thing. And then you play C major for the C major. So you might say, wait a minute, G7 is C major, and it is. But it doesn't sound right to play C major for the whole thing. It doesn't give you that feeling of, of the dominant, which is why I think um, the thinking is to think along the lines of the dominant, the, the G7. And I think generally speaking in this, in this vocabulary, if you try to think about where the nearest dominant is, just as a matter of principle, you know, it, it, it can be very helpful. The more I think about this. And I, I might do some videos on that coming up. I'm still uh, hatching my thinking on this. But uh, I welcome all your comments and everything on that regard. Again, this being an open conversation. But anyway, how are you going to play this now? All right. Without being so scaly, sounding like a scale. Well, here are some ideas that Barry uses to break up a scale. Now, we already know about 5, 4, 3, and 2, and the combo plan, 5, 4, 3, 2. There's another video on that, which I'll link to. 5 is 4, 3, and 2. Again, for more inf information on that, check out my video on 5, 4, 3, 2, melodic patterns. But Barry does some other ones, too. A lot of times he'll say, okay, let's say I'm going, I'm doing, let's say, a descending G7 scale from the seventh down to the root. You might find a lot of times he'll say reverse the seventh and the sixth. So already you kind of have a cool little melody. Um, let's see if we can do that down down a step, right? So it's Oops. Right? It's kind of nice. So all I did was I reversed the first two notes from the 6th to the 7th, and I created a nice little melody. Well, if I can do that, why can't I do it with the with the first and the second? Reverse the first and the second. In G, I'm playing a descending G7. Why don't I go and then reverse the third and the second on the C? And let's see what that sounds like. Uh, sorry. You can tell I've never practiced this. But the idea is that you, you come up with ideas and then you practice them. And the more you do, the more you can do things you've never done before. I guess they call that improvising. Anyway, I digress. What's some other things that we can do? Well, you know what I hear Barry doing a lot is five, let's say I'm doing a G7. 
he'll go five, four, three, and then I'll skip to the first and do the second and the seventh. Which kind of sounds nice on the blues. So very simple. It's just five, four, three, two, one, but reversing three, one, two, seven. So there's an example doing it on a blues. How would we work it into a two, five, one? Okay. I don't think it works on the one, so I might go. Uh, Just use it on the five. One, two, three, four. Two, three, four, one, two. Or maybe two beat changes. One, two. One. There you go. I just came up the a triad on the third of the C and ended on the sixth. So here's a nice little exercise you can do on your two five one exercise. Those of you that made it through my little brain meltdown can see that this is all off the cuff. So by all means, be creative, right? So what do we have by now? We have reverse two of the notes, or right, five fourth, like that. Um, so let's see what we can do with that. Let's see what we can do with that. You can also use these in the tritone. You can take the same pattern, put it in the tritone. Let's say we go, right? So that's the sixth and seventh of G7. So I would need the sixth, seventh of D flat. Right? Two beat changes would look like this. I'm on the fifth. Let's throw a five pattern. Okay, so now here's my line. Now that's a very cool line. And all I did was I did take the first two notes of that reversed sixth and seventh pattern, did it in its tritone, which ends up surrounding the fifth of the key, which sets me up for a five pattern. So again, it's a language. We're stringing words together to make sentences. Right? And then down a step. This is a nice one. I'm going to steal this one from myself. Whoa, baby. Okay, one last note, and there should probably be a whole video on this, but while it's, it's in my mind, those of you who made it this far, um, there are four kind of ways you can do these 2-5-1 patterns. You can do them in a descending, I'll just do the root 7th, 3rd. Um, you can do them in descending whole steps. So you can think of that like the bridge to Cherokee pattern or the... Uh, how high the moon pattern, you know? Uh, somewhere there's music, somewhere there's two, somewhere there's seven, how high the moon, somewhere there's da, da. Okay, so that's, that's that. 
Um, and you can do them in ascending. So, you know, here's your two, five, one. Let's start down low. So that's almost like uh, the shiny stockings, you know. Here it is. And so on. Uh, I think Dolphin Dance does that too, right? Uh, so we can call that the dolphin dance slash shiny stockings pattern ascending in whole steps you also have descending in whole steps so in half steps sorry right okay so we'll call that uh, folks dressed up as eskimos Folks dressed up as Eskimos, and folks dressed up as Eskimos, folks dressed up as Eskimos, they keep dressing up like Eskimos, why are they still dressed up like Eskimos, right, the, the Christmas song, or Arigen does that, oh, I did that badly, uh, but you get that, so we'll call it the Arigen pattern, and then there's the ascending half steps, uh, Okay, and I guess the one song that comes to mind that does that is the bridge to voyage, you know. And here's the bridge. I gotta practice it. But you get the idea. It's ascending in half steps. So all of these lines, like that last one that I did. You can take that line in every one of those patterns. Let's do a couple. Down a half step. Down a half step. That's part of the joy of this. Okay, now I'm in A. Here we go. Now I'm in A flat. Okay. Uh, now let's try ascending half steps. So. Uh, okay, so you can pivot too. Did you notice that? You can pivot. If you run out of room on your instrument, you can always pivot. Check out the video on pivoting. Okay, so, um, and where were we? We were on C. Right, so now we got to go to D flat. D flat's going to look like this. Oh boy. And so on and so on. So, it's not only just mindless practice, it's also creative. You come up with your own unique signature combinations and, um, you know, love to hear some of them. So by all means, uh, don't be shy. Uh, let me know in the comments. Um, and uh, yeah, if this is useful to you, please consider supporting me on Patreon, Isaac Raz, uh, uh, Patreon slash Isaac Raz. And, uh, you know, um, I'll see you on the next one. Check out all the linked videos in the description and, uh, you know, uh, let me know what you think. Like, share, subscribe, you know, all the things. Uh, all the things you are supposed to do. And uh, I'll see you on the next one.